So it being 2.45, uh, let's start. So welcome everyone. Uh, I'm Carolyn McLaren. Happy to welcome you to the session on onboarding um, with Ashley Kamarik. And I will hand over to her. If you have questions, if you can pop them into chat for us, that would be great. And we will both be monitoring chat and we'll make sure that your questions get answered. Um, and in the meantime, I'm gonna hand over to you and the next uh, 45 minutes to an hour are yours. So welcome, All Ashley. Right. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here. Excited to be a part of Fortify 2020 online. Um, so we're here to talk about onboarding and um, the exciting benefits that we have from onboarding that maybe we don't even think about. So um, part of that is your performance of your team is, and your retention will benefit. But let's, uh, let's get into those details in just a second. So just some background about me. Um, I lived in Parma, Italy for 14 years, and there I did my initial education in art history and wine. I got my level two sommelier certification uh, from the As Italian Association of Sommeliers. Um, moved back to Canada and um, took on a couple of leadership roles here in the Vancouver area. Uh, did an MBA at Royal Roads. And in my work experience, I noticed that there was really a need for leadership help. There were some uplifting leaders out there and some, some that just were not that enlightened or in uplifting. And so I, I started this business to, um, to, do, to provide training and coaching, consulting, um, team building for, and I worked with many different industries. In the meantime, I started teaching um, in the MBA program at University Canada West in their uh, organizational behavior and leadership programs. Um, and then it occurred to me what it, it would be just a perfect, um, perfect storm for me to be able to bring my um, leadership knowledge and experience, my, my motivation, my purpose of helping to cultivate more enlightened motivational leaders, respectful leaders, optimal communicators um, to the beverage and hospitality industry. So I, I started this new branch of my business that I've called Beyond the Wine, but it serves all the beverage industry and hospitality industry because I believe that the conversations that matter, the connections that we forge with our clients and with our teams, absolutely, they are beyond what's in the glass. So beyond the wine. Um, also a note about me, I'm a huge foodie, super passionate foodie. And if my gym remains closed due to COVID, I could actually become a huge foodie in a more literal sense. But that's another conversation for another time. Okay, so agenda. What are we gonna cover today? We're gonna look at what is onboarding? What are the elements of it? And why does it matter? Why are we even talking about it in this session? We're going to look at four key elements, the four pillars of an onboarding plan. And then we're going to talk about your onboarding plan. So before we dig in, I would like to ask Carolyn, if you could please launch our poll to just get a sense in the room of you know, where we're at uh, in terms of who's got an onboarding plan. Is it a great plan? Is it a, the beginning of a plan? So if you could please give us your feedback here. That would be awesome. Some participation right off the bat. Have we got some answers in there, Carolyn? I'll let you. We do. So there give you Give us go. the signal. Okay. Onboarding plan. What onboarding plan? Okay. Excellent. Nowhere to go but up. I love it. It's okay, but pretty basic. All right. Okay. Uh, awesome. Awesome. We're working on it. It gets better every season. 10% of the folks in the room and 10% also have an onboarding plan that is top shelf. Wonderful. That's fantastic. I can see we're going to have some really good dialogue here in this session too. Um, I'm going to start by saying that um, 
it doesn't matter if you don't have a plan. It's we're going to start with not, sustainably. Yes, we want to have a plan. Um, so you start somewhere. You don't have to have a fully articulated multiple page plan. It's the principle of it. So you start and you build and you grow. So if you don't have a plan, you're in the right place. We're going to get to it. Okay. So what exactly are we talking about when we talk about onboarding? So here are the activities. It's activities and interactions that we plan, that we set up, we put in our calendar to welcome people, the new people that are joining our organization, make sure they're settling in as quickly as possible and as smoothly as possible, making sure that they're clear on what we expect of them that they're, they've got the same idea as we do about what their job entails. And uh, also ensure that they get the skills and knowledge they need to be successful. Do they know where to go and do the learning they need? Do they know where the information can be found? Do you have a manual or a handbook? Where is that kept? Who's the person they should be connecting with to, to, get, their, to get more help if they need it? Also, the onboarding experience allows you to give them a taste of the culture of your company by socializing them as to your company culture right from the get-go. You allow them to understand, okay, who are we as a team? What do we stand for? What are our values? And we had that amazing um, lightning talk with Gary who was talking about um, their culture and the reflection that they did and it became a very articulated detailed culture so someone that's new won't have that automatic knowledge you need to bring them into the fold so that they can become you know not someone external they're now one of us this is how we are this is what we do so and that can begin even through the recruitment stage giving people a little bit of information as you're shortlisting them and making them aware of, you know, what they're, what they're getting into, what they're about to become a part of. And ideally the onboarding, it's not a boot camp of one day, touch points throughout the time, uh, might, maybe it's a season or the ongoing career of a person can last. So the onboarding phase can be six months to even a whole year long. Also, we're in the business of hospitality. So learning from example, modeling those behaviors, modeling that hospitality that we want our people to show our guests. So what better way to be, to have that integrity and practice what you're preaching than to model it with your new employees. So why does this all matter? Well, um, we know that <laughs> these are incredible statistics. These for me are absolutely mind blowing. Um, organizations with strong onboarding program improve new hire retention by 82%. So if you've got a turnover challenge, I don't like to use the word problem, but we have challenges. Um, onboarding might be part of the cause of that. And productivity, productivity increases by over 70% with a solid onboarding program. And it actually, it makes perfect sense because onboarding, you're making sure that they've got the knowledge, the access to the information immediately. And they know where to go and get answers. They're not in the dark. They're not hesitant. They're not holding back. No, they're hitting the ground running. So it would follow, of course, that the productivity goes up quicker. Yeah. And for seasonal hires, this is particularly important because we've got a short season or the duration of season that we have. We don't want this onboarding and learning phase to go on for halfway, three quarters of the way through. No, we want to get people up and running and productive and engaged as soon as possible. So for seasonal um, hires, this is even more critically important. Um, and then in terms of retention, here's another couple of, another couple of uh, figures for us. 90% of employees decide whether they're going to stay within the first year. 
So this is um, really referring to people that are in an indeterminate period contract. So 90% um, first year, they're gonna say, yeah, this is for me or no, I'm out of here. The 20% that decide to leave will hit the road within a month and a half. So if they're not happy, they're gonna go soon. So we've got an, a month and a half to make that great impression, to make that good first impression, to show people that we care about them, that, we care, that we're happy that they're here and let them, let them get uh, productive and feeling satisfied and, and happy that they've chosen to join our team. And hopefully if it goes well, um, we build greater employee engagement, greater loyalty to the company. When we feel like we are cared for and nurtured and that we matter, we're not just a number, we're not just a warm body with a pulse that needs, because we need someone to staff the tasting room counter. No, if we are, if we feel like we're a valued member of the team, we absolutely are going to go the extra mile for our, our employer. If there's something extra stuff that needs to be moved or you need to stay later. And of course we know in our industry, you have those busy times when you need people to not be, you know, like Shawnee said in her um, session, looking at the clock saying, oh, 4.30, well, bye. And the tasting room was full. If we've got a good understanding and there's a good level of trust and loyalty, you can count on your people to go the extra mile, to take ownership so that they feel like it's their business too, which is ideal, that's what we want. Builds a stronger company culture. And of course we know that when our people are happy, they're providing better customer service to our visitors, like Sir Richard said. Also, J.W. Marriott had a, a very similar quote, but Sir Richard's photo was better, so I used this one instead. Look after your staff and they will look after your customers. So that's why it matters. Um, now, you might be a small operation. You might think, well, onboarding plan sounds like a lot of work. There's, do we really need it? Are we, are we too small to really need an onboarding plan? Nope. No, it's the principle of it. It's the same principle of hospitality. If you think about um, hospitality can manifest in an intimate gathering, a small little gathering that you put care and attention into preparing, or it can be a magnificent event of a thousand people. The principle of it remains the same. The, the principle of hospitality remains the same. So if we've decided, okay, we are gonna, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. We're gonna have an onboarding plan. Uh, where do we start? Okay, so for the people that don't have an onboarding plan, not to worry, you are absolutely in the right room. You're gonna get one today. Uh, we actually have a downloadable uh, template for you to use with lots of ideas that you can customize. It's available in the um, show notes in the, on the schedule. And we're also gonna pop it at the end of the session. We'll put it into the chat. I'd like to um, highlight this, that of course not all roles are going to be needing the same type of onboarding. So if you're hiring for your office staff, your administrative team, they're going to need certain type of information. They're going to have um, certain aspects of their job that require different kinds of training than maybe your tasting room team or your production facility um, or out in the fields. So, and, and the out in the fields folks absolutely um, would love to have an onboarding plan too. Uh, so we're, we tailor the plan and that's why it's great to have um, a template that you can use and shift and, and move things around and customize. Um, you're already, you know, you're 90% there with the template. You just customize it for um, admin folks, admin team, tasting room team, and you're off to the races. One thing to be mindful of is the fun factor. We want to have, we, and we'll look at the elements of the onboarding plan. Um, and so you'll have some formal aspect of it because of course you have to communicate information and uh, compliance 
matters. But also don't forget to insert some informal fun activities to um, transfer the learning in, in a lighter way, which will also, that communicates part of your, your culture, your company culture, and hopefully inspire your new hire to let them know that, you know, they're really in a place that uh, takes their business seriously, but also knows how to enjoy themselves and, and enjoy that team spirit. All right, so the four elements of our plan, here we go. So we've got the uh, compliance, as I mentioned before, we've got the rules and regulations, the cultural part, company culture, that socialization element, that connection, and then the performance on the job. And we're gonna dig into these in a little bit of detail now. All right, so um, the rules and regulations, the compliance side of your plan, absolutely, this is the, the administrative stuff, your company policies. Are you, um, does your establishment invite your employees to sip wine in the tasting room with your guests? Some do. You have to state that so it's very clear. Um, do you have a harassment policy, a sexual harassment policy, bullying policy? Um, great idea to, to put that down in, in, on paper because people come from different backgrounds, different walks of life, different levels of experience, um, different, just different, have been grow, have grown up in different ways. And so it's not, it's not, um, it's not to be assumed that everyone understands what is right and what is wrong, what is appropriate, what is acceptable. So this is your chance to write up even just a simple policy in very clear language that explains, you know, what is what is okay and what is not okay and what are the consequences for the not okay behavior. Great idea to have these signed for acknowledgement. Um, also in this uh, area, you will communicate the laws that govern your specific industry. Um, serving, the serving it right element, um, over serving, liability. Important to know these, these uh, legal implications, legal liabilities of the work that we're doing. Um, this is when you send over that employment contract, like Shawnee was mentioning earlier today, doesn't need to be, you know, the mother of all contracts, 20 pages long, but something, something that shows you've got your house in order. We, we have a contract here, we have an agreement, it's an accountability piece too. Um, and any other paperwork that you've got, if you've got a benefits plan or whatever administrative forms that you want to um, have on file for them. Um, and ideally, this is great to do in advance. We call this pre-boarding. And why I say ideally we do this earlier than the first day on the job is because then it gives them, you know, they can get a start on it. So when they arrive on the first day of their job, they're probably really excited, probably kind of nervous, but super excited to be there. After all, working in the, the beverage industry, Um, when we have the chance to get this administrative stuff out of the way in advance of the first day, that means they come, they're not put at a desk with a pen and, and all of these stacks of papers. They can get right in and start meeting people and socializing and integrating and learning right away. So, and they can bring their questions. They can, you get a head start on this compliance piece. Okay. All right. So. The culture. Here is where you get a chance to tell your, your new hire about the great legendary story of the company. What are, what are the, the stuff of legend in your organization? What about the history of the, the owners and how they came to be? Um, these are stories that absolutely you're going to want to also include in your training plan so that your, your employees can transfer those to the delight of your guests. 
let them know what they're being a part of by coming and, and visiting your, your place. So you'll share those, let them in on what the, the culture, um, what the culture is made up of in your organization. What about the values? You know, when we, we heard from Gary, they had this really great discussion around, you know, what makes them tick? What brings them together? What's their why? If you see Simon Sinek with that, um, the why video, it's just brilliant. And um, letting your new hire in on, you know, what matters to us? How do we behave together? Um, how do we... What are, what are our driving forces as an organization, as a team? How do we interact as, as a team, as the staff do, and in actually a literal sense, do we email? How do we communicate about scheduling? Do we have a WhatsApp group? Is there a Facebook group for our, for our staff, like a private group somehow? Do we have a weekly huddle? How do we share information? All of these little details um, that form part of your, your corporate culture, corporate culture, your, co your company's culture. Um, and terminology and language. So sometimes organizations, they have um, special terms, like almost a code language, and it's a differentiator. It's a culture builder. It's a culture definer. And you'll definitely want to let your new hires in on that code so that they're not feeling ostracized and, and excluded. Language, I added here because uh, when we have people in this diverse environment that we are working in, we might have a couple of people that come from the same country and maybe their first language might not be English. They might share the, their first native language and they might feel comfortable and, and happy to speak their own language with their compatriot. Um, and we completely understand that. However, when we are working in a team and we've got two people or three people speaking a language that er, that not everyone understands, of course it's not done with malevolence or um, with any ill intent at all, but it is exclus it's exclusionary and it can create a rift in your team. People aren't understanding and they might think, oh, they're talking about me. Oh, why, I wonder why they're laughing. Why are they laughing? So it's, it's a great idea to um, establish that the language of the team is probably English considering our area, but just to let people understand that, um, that it's a priority to be inclusive in that sense. All right, and now the connection, socialization. So in the pre-boarding phase, we have opportunities to, um, well, to reach out to the new hire. We've offered them the job, they've accepted it. We've hopefully sent over the, um, the documents that we need them to fill in, all those forms, uh, the admin stuff. Um, why not send them some reading that they can do? And maybe even introducing the team to the new hire, sending out an email to everyone, letting them know that this person is going to be starting. Sally's going to be here on Monday. This is a little bit about her background. She comes from this type of education. She's studied here and there, loves to do this in her free time. So not just professional information, but what, what she's like as a person. Um, she'll be joining our team. Um, that also helps us personalize the arrival. Isn't it awful when you go somewhere and you've been invited and no one is expecting you and has no idea that you were going to come? And it's kind of like you're invited to, I don't know, um, Thanksgiving dinner and they forget to tell you the address and the, you get there and uh, the table's not set and it's just really not, it, it's a bit disorienting and you wonder, am I in the right place? Do, do they even want me to come when you're not expected? It's, so personalizing the arrival instead looks like the person comes into the uh, place where you've in the pre-boarding connection told them when you arrive, here's where you can park. This is where you'll go. This is who you'll ask for. And then that person 
is prepared to receive the new the new employee and greets them by name and smiles and welcomes them tells them that they're glad to see them and it introduces to the um to the team excellent idea to have a buddy system a buddy system or a mentor system is a phenomenal way to accelerate the learning and also the integration into the team. If you've got a more senior buddy and you'll choose the buddy carefully, you want someone who is a, a good example for your new hire to follow. And that buddy can get them up to speed much faster. They'll tell them things that they will probably have learned on their own gradually. But like we said at the beginning, we want to make this onboarding integration as rapid and effective and efficient as possible so that your new hire can express the best of their talents for which you hired them. So a buddy can accelerate the integration, let them in on some key information, where you find information, where things are, and also provide a, um, a, a mentoring experience for them as well to help them, encourage them, correct them if they're if they're not you know, doing something correctly. Um, and also you might think about integrating a ritual or rituals for new hire. And by this, I don't mean, you know, rolling someone in tar and feathers, but it could be a, a special team meeting or cupcakes or, I don't know, now with uh, online, we're, we're distant, but there are different initiatives that you could take that formally bring in someone into the new into the group so you've a new a way of introducing and celebrating their arrival make them feel special make them understand how much they matter to the team also social activities and these informal catch-ups do you have um staff happy hour or um, um now with covid you know sports and and things are a little bit more difficult but do you do an online, a games night or some kind of, you can integrate, put it in the calendar, a regular way of the of giving the, the team an opportunity to socialize and connect outside of work, building those bonds. All right, and the fourth pillar, the fourth element of our onboarding plan is the performance, is linked to the performance. And um, we want to make sure that we are in alignment with the new hire in terms of their understanding of what the job is. Hopefully there's a detailed job description and it would be a good idea um, to meet with the new hire and just go through that job description and make sure that you're on the same page. Also, expectations in terms of performance. What does success look like? What is it that we are hoping they will do? What, at what level are we expecting them to perform? Modeling that. Um, and this is a chance also to let them know about the incentives, goal setting. Goal setting both for the um, for the organization in terms of these are our sales targets or um, club memberships, uh, subscriptions, newsletter subscribers. What is it that we're trying to do? Um, also in alignment with your marketing department or your marketing person, um, making sure that the new hire is aware of the big picture. What is it that we're trying to do here as an organization? And where do you fit in? So you can understand the value of what you do by showing up to do your job. What is the impact you're having? Not just having happy customers, and by customers, we can intend that to mean external customers that walk in the door um, or internal customers, which are our colleagues. So goal setting. And so it can be goal setting from the perspective of the organization, but also goal setting in terms of the employee. Are they working for a season because they didn't get into that program at school and they really want to be a physiotherapist and so they're just, you know, making some money? Okay, good to know. Is working at 
a business like yours, their lifelong dream, and they see this as the first step in their, in creating the destiny that they're meant to live, really good to know because that person is already motivated beyond belief. So this is a person that you'll want to cultivate. And you, you'll you know that, that it's a person that you will be able to um, involve in cross-training and, and if a manager is not, uh, is not able to come in, that's a person that you'll want to maybe elevate um, because you're aware of their goals. So excellent to be talking about career goals, personal goals. Um, performance review schedule. And these are all things that, yeah, they take a bit of time. Uh, and this whole thing, this whole onboarding business takes a bit of time, but the return on that investment can be immense. So performance review, again, looking back at the KPIs, looking at the goals, when are we going to check in? Ideally, we don't have a performance review at the end of the year only or at the end of the season only. The performance review, and it doesn't have to be a, an incredibly formal process. Um, a performance review, now the trend really is moving toward a coaching style of leadership. So a coaching session, let's set some goals. And in fact, in the template, you're going to see, you know, for week one, week two, month one, and you have regular check-ins to see how are we tracking on those goals? Do you have what you need? Do you need more learning? Do you need more training? Um, how are things going? So checking in to, um, to verify the performance. Learning opportunities. This is a great time to also let them know, are there conferences they can go to? Do they get to go to Fortify? Do they have um, workshops or are there online learning opportunities? Maybe you've got workshops embedded in your, your website, videos that you ask your team to, to watch. Um, what opportunities are there? And do you use peer-to-peer -peer feedback? So if this is something that uh, you want to implement, it's good to bring everybody in on how this is going to look because sometimes people are hesitant to receive feedback from their peers. They think that, well, we're at the same level. I don't need to take feedback from you. Um, in fact, this it was an interesting debate I had in um, my leadership class that I was teaching last night. Um, and a young man said, I absolutely would never take feedback from a colleague. I think that's inappropriate. And uh, so there are cultural differences in, how we approach and how we accept peer feedback, peer-to-peer -peer feedback. So if you're going to implement this, and this is an excellent, excellent idea to do this because it creating a, a, an environment where there's accountability among the team, everyone's holding each other accountable. And that's not, you know, pointing fingers and saying, oh, you know, look what you did or no, it's everyone's helping each other. You're not waiting for the manager to step in and correct. You're, you're all helping each other. We're all a team. And so if you are creating that culture in your organization, your manager is going to have a lot less to do in terms of correcting behaviors because we're holding each other accountable. So it's you need to socialize. If you're going to do that, then it's important that everyone understands, you know, how do we give feedback? And we had some good conversation around that this morning too. Um, how to give feedback effectively. And then the future career planning, as I mentioned before, linking to goal setting. Where are we headed? At? Where is your new employee headed? All right. So I, before we go on, I'd love, Carolyn, if we could launch a couple of polls about, an on, about our onboarding. So um, we've got three quick polls here. Which area? So we've gone through these four pillars, these four elements of onboarding. Um, which area do you think you excel in? Where do, what do you cover well? Oh, these are all together. So yeah, you can just scroll down. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, Carolyn.
And Ashley, do you want me to stop the poll now? Um, sure, yeah, let's see the results that we've got. Yeah, okay. So onboarding that goes well, people have got the culture and the on the job performance down. Awesome. Yeah, the socialization and rules and regulations, less so interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, and the rules and regulations piece, it's interesting that it's not really a priority. Um, okay, and then which do you, which could you do better? Rules and regs, okay. Um, interesting, and the connection, yeah. So a little bit of, little bit all over here, yeah. And would you say that turnover could be linked to insufficient onboarding? Um, kind of split there, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it does definitely play a role. Thank you all for your feedback on that. That is um, definitely very helpful. Um, good to know. All right, so let's carry on. Uh, I've, I've added these notes here, um, leadership and onboarding. Um, I mentioned earlier in the performance review part um, of the performance uh, pillar, um, having a coaching culture. Um, and I know that, you know, having performance reviews scheduled regularly, it's a lot of work. And so if you instead can have embed coaching moments or in the team huddle or have um, create a, a ritual that you have weekly or maybe you meet at the end of every day and say, okay, what are five awesome things that happened today? What are five things that we're gonna do differently tomorrow? Um, or build that in so that you're, you're working in a, a continuous improvement um, trajectory. As a leader, watch for different personality styles because people um, are motivated differently as we discussed earlier today, this morning with Sean, Shawnee. Um, and they're also, they also learn differently and they respond to your personality differently. So asking questions of them, being mindful, really listening. So that was the, the third one that I wanted to share, the listening part listening at different levels, not just the verbal, but the nonverbal, the listening for, for the motivation, the meaning of what's being said. This is an excellent resource that um, I am very happy to share. A friend of mine, he's a listening guru in Australia, and he does, uh, there's a listening quiz on his website, and he's got a lot of really great information on listening at different levels, which as leaders can be invaluable to help you understand and motivate your team more effectively. So the um, it, we're, we're getting close to wrapping up here. Um, I want to share this Italian expression, patti chiari amicizia lunga, means essentially that when we have clear understanding and clear, uh, we, we've understood each other um, in advance, at the beginning, at the outset of a relationship, then we have the path is cleared for a long friendship, a long and healthy and productive, good friendship or relationship, amicizia lunga, long friendship. Um, and that's what we want to do with our onboarding plan is bring people on, make sure that everything is understood, the our expectations, their expectations, what success looks like so that we can have a long and fruitful, positive relationship with our new hire. Uh, we want, I encourage you, welcome your new hires with care, attention, and sincerity like you would, like you would welcome guests to your table with that same spirit of welcoming hospitality. Continue to have communication flowing let them know who, whom they can communicate with, where they can get information, keep the communication flowing, be available. And consider this as a process. Consider the onboarding as a process instead of um, a one day boot camp experience, like quick, let's get this over with so we're done and we can tick that box. It's ongoing, be patient with the process and, and continue with the process. So 
I am very happy to share, Carolyn, if you want to paste, um, pop that into the chat, you're, we've got a link to it. It's also in the description of the session. You can also get it there. Uh, starting point for your onboarding plan, customize it. And uh, I raise my glass to you and your success. And we have this chat room. Carolyn says we've got, we can stay. We don't have to go. So <laughs> I am happy to, uh, for the duration of our schedule time, but we can stay even a little longer if there are questions. And I'd also be very pleased if anyone um, wants to put together their plan or wants to refine their plan or talk through it all, very happy to jump on a call with you at, at any time to, um, to help you put those pieces together and customize your plan so that it works for you. So that is, I'll leave it there uh, and open it up to any questions. Great. Thanks. And I think the questions might have to go into chat unless people can unmute themselves, which I don't think they can. So we'll take them out oh. of chat. And I just wanted to let everyone know that I have put the onboarding checklist. It's in the chat and it's also in the um, virtual portal under Ashley's seminar. If you go into sessions, you'll see it at the bottom to download from there as well. Any questions? I have a quick one for you, Ashley. Um, sure. Can you give me sort of in your estimation, you know, who does onboarding really well? And I know there are so many variables, right? So, um, you know, you can be a big company like Starbucks and you've got a lot of resources to help with onboarding, but who, who would you say in your experience does a really good job at onboarding and doesn't throw millions of dollars at it? <laughs> That's a good, good question. Um, I have seen a couple of, um, a couple of companies that I've been working with, um, in the states actually in the in the hr space because there is a sensitivity to um to that of course if you're dealing in hr um and it's a buddy system getting the information in advance the um it's spark co is the company that i'm thinking about right now um and yeah so it's because the the it's an integrative process. And I think that's really the key to, to success. Um, buddying with a, a veteran is also a key, I think, to their success. Um, yeah, so, and, and a lot of these initiatives, once you get the system in place, once you take the time, it's, you know, the work is front loaded in, you know, in a lot of ways with onboarding because you might take the time in advance to create the modules and to, to do the scheduling and think, okay, so every Friday we're gonna do this. Okay, let's get it into the calendar and all of that kind of front-loaded planning. But then once you've done that, it just, it runs, it flows. Yeah, so it's a question of taking the time or finding someone who can, uh, who you can delegate that to, who can take ownership of that process. Great, thank you. I'd love to hear from someone on the call who um, answered in the survey uh, that they, they do well. What are some of the things that really work well um, with the folks on the call? I'm seeing Luke uh, for a seasonal industry like the wine industry where there seems to be a massive level of turnover year to year and where employees come from many different backgrounds. Yeah, what can be done with onboarding to ensure that employees want to return each year? Oh, awesome question, Luke. Thank you for that. Um, I think, um, yes, the diversity is a really important uh, point and I think there's, um, I would recommend video messages. I would recommend recording videos because a lot of the um, a lot of the messages are going to be similar, and I would recommend watching them together 
with your team, with the new hires and discussing. Um, so in terms of service quality, how do we speak to our guests, even the scripts? Because when you've got a very a highly diverse um, group of, of staff members, English might not be everyone's first language. So just those, you know, little things like um, we say, hello, ma'am. And someone might believe that the, the polite way to address a lady who comes into the tasting room is, hello, lady. <laughs> and <laughs> I've seen, you know, just they're in good faith, but it's just a question of, of language. And so those little scripts that you can, you can have, um, you know, video tutorials that can be recorded by your tasting room manager, um, training sessions for those. Um, and I think you're addressing your question of wanting, ensuring that people want to come back year after year. The um, money is, it, it, it's not the biggest driver. It's a satisfier, not a driver. So we want to be paying fair wages, you know, for the industry in the area, but really um, it's the intrinsic motivators. That is the most powerful thing you can do is pay some attention to the intrinsic motivators and intrinsic motivators work when you are using motivators that are meaningful to the person. Like Sean Lee was saying earlier today, you know, the basketball tickets, she blew her sales numbers out of the park and got something that was not really that exciting to her. It was meant to be a huge reward. Her, for her, it didn't have that meaning. So understanding what matters to people, giving them that. And people want to, they want to feel a sense of belonging. I mean, think about the higher Maslow's hierarchy of needs right in the middle there, belonging. We want to feel like we belong. Being included, being valued, being listened to. Employee engagement surveys, not only employee engagement in terms of, you know, how's it going? How's the manager managing? Can we get some feed, like asking, inviting their feedback, but also inviting their ideas. Uh, there's a, a phenomenal video uh, on intrinsic motivation by Daniel Pink, uh, and he talks about um, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. So autonomy, you know, give someone a job to do, let them do it their way, tell them the outcome that you want, don't stand over and micromanage them, let them be creative and express their ingenuity, innovation, so autonomy, mastery, give people the opportunity to learn and grow and recognize that they're getting better at their job. That's very satisfying. And then purpose, a sense of purpose, letting them know that the fact that they're sweeping the floor is actually hugely important in the grand scheme. You want guests to come and see a bunch of just crap on the floor? No. We, we, it's a well-run shop and we take pride in our appearance. And so the fact that you are in charge of sweeping the floor is actually really important. It's not the, the worst job that we've got. It's actually a fundamentally important job. And just if, giving value to what people do, telling them that. And, and it's just you know, a question of being mindful about acknowledging the contribution of everyone. And I think that goes way further than throwing some extra money at people, making them want to come back. Because if somebody, you know, <laughs> outbids you by 50 cents an hour, they're out the door because their heart's not with you. Great, thank you. Any other questions from the group? I don't think so. It looks like we've neared the end. So um, Ashley, I'd like to thank you so much. Some really useful tips and I hope uh, that people will take away that onboarding doesn't have to be a huge laborious process. There's a couple of quick hits and a relatively easy strategy that you can adopt to be successful. So uh, thank you again for your time and thanks for being part of Fortify. Oh, thank you very much. Um, and I saw, Severine, you, you popped a, a question in there and I just saw it there. Happy to uh, go, if you can explain when you 
message that you, you said, what does this mean? May have, or maybe you were referring to the onboarding plan. I think that's what she was referring to. I didn't want it to go unaddressed. Yeah. Um, okay. So hopefully that's clear what that is now. So <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Carolyn, so much. And thank you very much for inviting me to be a part of Fortify. Thanks, everyone. And um, just remember that we are actually heading into our next session keynote speaker from four until five o'clock. So we've got a bit of a break and then we're back at four. Thank you.